God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The city clerk, please take roll. Davis Reinhardt. Here. Bud Starker. Present. Joyce J. Here. Mike Stites. Here. George Pond. Present. Joseph DeMott. Here. Tracy Langworthy. Here. And Christy Davis. Here. Uh, thank you. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of May 14th, 2012? So moved. Second. We have a motion for approval was seconded by council member Starker. Any changes to the minutes? Please poll the council. Motion carries 8-0. Uh, thank you. We have one proclamation tonight, break for Bella. I would ask that Matt Whittern please step forward. Our city clerk will read the proclamation. Matt, feel free to say a few words. Okay, um, this is a proclamation for break for Bella, whereas the summer months of June through August represent increased activity among children in neighborhood and surrounding streets, and whereas motor vehicle crashes are the leading cause of death for children 2 to 14 years of age, and whereas pedestrians account for about 30% of all traffic fatalities involving children under the age of 15, and whereas approximately 50 children are injured or killed per week, per week, as a result of a vehicle back, backing up, and whereas safe and attentive drivers who adhere to the posted neighborhood speed limit make our streets inherently safer for pedestrians, bikers, and other drivers, and whereas it is our duty as concerned citizens and parents to educate children about the importance of practicing safety and awareness while playing in neighborhoods. Now, therefore, the Mayor and City Council of the City of Wheat Ridge, Colorado, hereby recognize the Break for Bella Summer Safe Neighborhood Driving Awareness Campaign starting the last week of June through August 2012. Done and resolved this 11th day of June 2012 signed by Mayor DiTullio. Uh, good evening. My name is Matt Witter, and I'm here tonight to thank um, the Weird City Council and Mayor DiTullio for issuing the proclamation and recognition of the Break for Bella Safe Driving Summer Awareness Campaign. Um, I'm an employee at Communication Infrastructure Group, and we're uh, during the summer of 2009, my colleague Christy's daughter um, was eight, and she was hit by a speeding car while playing in front of her house, and it really affected us. Um, they live just up the road in Arvada, and we thought, well, is there anything that we can do to get people... Um, thinking about this and um, being more mindful when they're driving around uh, residential streets. Um, so on Bella's behalf, um, who she's, by the way, she's recovered fully by now, but on her behalf, uh, I would ask every resident of Wheat Ridge to consider these facts. 42% uh, of all childhood injury-related deaths and 40% of all childhood injury-related emergency room visits occur between May and August, the summer months. Residential speeding is the number one complaint to police departments and city councils throughout the United States. You probably got hear quite a bit about residential speeding on the council here. 45% uh, of all pedestrian fatalities uh, involving children under 16 happen between 3 and 7 p.m. And 4,000 sons, daughters, mothers, and fathers are killed each year uh, just by walking in the neighborhood. Um, so we can reverse those trends. We can, uh, as drivers, we can watch our speed in the neighborhood and put away our cell phones when we're driving. Parents, we can talk with our kids about driving, or kids about playing safe, um, and making sure they're attentive and mindful pedestrians. Uh, and we invite the public to participate in the Break for Bella campaign, uh, joining our call to action uh, by liking our cause on Facebook and taking the Safe Driver Pledge. Uh, so please help us spread the message and visit facebook.com slash break for Bella to get involved. And remember that school is out and kids are about. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. The next item on the agenda is public. It's like I want public. Oh, I got the wrong list up here. Oh. Yeah, I know. I think I'm on my list here. The next item on the agenda is citizens' right to speak. It's reserved for members of the public who wish to speak on any item not on the agenda. Speakers are allowed three minutes. Others may donate their time to the speaker at the podium for a total of nine minutes. When you are speaking at the podium, you'll see a green light when you start speaking. 
a yellow light when you have 30 seconds left, and a red light when your time is up. So please step forward for public comment and spell your last name for the record. You can line up on against the wall, and I would ask that um, you spell your last name for the record and give us your city and or your address. The name is Janet Jan, and I'm a resident at Highland West Apartments on 38th. Um, I'm here. Could you spell your last name for the record? Oh, I'm sorry. J-A-H-N. Thank you. Janet Jan. Um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate everyone on 38th Avenue's restriping. Um, it looks great, and I'm excited about it. Also, I'd like to congratulate Ridge on getting the EPA's Brownfield Assessment Grant. Um, I was reading about that today, and I was thrilled. Hopefully we can get some things looking a lot better than they do now <laughs> on, on, on Wadsworth. Um, I'm here mainly to introduce or to encourage the council members to attend the garden tour. This is Wheat Ridge's second garden tour. And if you didn't um, see one, the one last year, you have a delight ahead of you for this year. There's nine new gardens and they um, are all in Wheat Ridge, and they range anywhere from beautiful perennials to goats and tiny horses and whatever. <laughs> we have a variety. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd also request that you pray for sunshine, because we know a garden tour is a lot better on all of us if we have sunshine. I'm praying right now for some rain because of the firefighters that are having some trouble containing the High Park fire, but I'm hoping that my prayers are answered today, tomorrow, or the next day, and <laughs> everything's cleared up by the, the um, Wheat Ridge uh, Garden Tour. The Garden Tour will be on uh, sun Saturday, June 16th, from 9 to 3 p.m. Tickets are available online at Wheat Ridge 2020, or you can get them Saturday morning at the 5 through 8 school across the street from um, the new Pizza Pub on 38th. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, my name is Tara Jan, J-A-H-N, and apparently my mother and I go in pairs because I feel like I always go right behind her. But um, And she also stole my words because I was going to come up here and say how great um, the changes on 38th have been even just in the past month. Um, I'm among a couple other community members who have really taken um, Live Local as a, as a program of Wheat Ridge 2020, and we're trying to make it our own. And so... Uh, the activities on 38th Avenue have really allowed us to expand some of the live local activities. The f main one, the first that we, our expansion effort was a, is a weekly excuse me, run club. So we meet at Right Coast on 38th Ave, right out front of Right Coast, and we do a 5K. Everyone is welcome. We start at 6.30, and um, we just do, we go actually do through the quiet streets of, of Wheat Ridge. It's uh, funny because we've we tend to run in a line across the whole street and have only encountered a car twice. So we, it's very safe if anyone wants to join us. And we have walkers too, so it's a run and walk club. My mom and um, a few other people do the walking route and Janice rolls around with her stroller um, with Olivia in it. So um, we encourage you to join us. Um, and if you see us out walking or running, please wave at us. Um, the other activities we are working on this week is our first um, Wheat Ridge cru Cruiser Crawl. So we are meeting right across from um, we are, or we Recyclery, and right, we're going to hit up Right Coast, Ceviche, and end at Wheat Ridge Lanes on Thursday. So if anyone wants to join, we're starting at 6 o'clock, and we'll be ending at Wheat Ridge Lanes, and so people can stay as long as they'd like. And then the final um, thing, just wanted to give everyone a heads up, is our Live Local Dines event, which will be at Wheat Ridge Lanes from 5 to 8. Everyone's welcome. It's going to be a really good time, 99-cent bowling. So please bring your families and come join us for an evening of fun. And um, other things we're looking forward to on 38th, um, we're looking at a family yoga in July. So that will be a really good activity, again, to bring some more attention and some more liveliness back to the street that um, you all have invested in. And so we want to, from the community perspective, give it a fighting chance to be really successful in the community that we'd like to live in. So thank you again. Thank you. Please spell your last name for the record. Oh. You don't know how to spell it, do you? That's okay. I could. No, I understand. It's for the record. <laughs> this is my first time up here in five months. It's just fine. Standing here, actually. Michael Snow. My last name is uh, spelled S-N-O-W. And uh, it's uh, I, I joined the first two speakers uh, tonight in 
uh, continuing the conversation and the excitement behind all the community development things that are happening and community building activities, really. In uh, addition to the running and the uh, yoga in the park and the cruiser crawl, those sorts of things that are coming under the Live Local Active heading, there's also a Live Local Harvest, which is just getting its start. Uh, as many of you know, we just had a long history of agriculture, but we intend to actually make it our future as well. So one of the first events we're doing uh, is this week, Wednesday night on, um, at 5.30. We'll actually be joining on the patio at Ceviche's Restaurant on 38th Avenue. And this is a meeting that is in conjunction with Live Well, Wheat Ridge's um, uh, ACE Task Force meetings. We will be discussing and planning for one of Wheat Ridge's first major uh, urban agriculture events. So it is largely a brainstorming activity. Uh, but it, I would like to welcome council members and cities, uh, uh, residents, anybody interested in gardening, urban agriculture, um, anything in that, that falls under that heading, please come join us as we are going to be talking about planning some fun events for this community that we hope will uh, last for a long time and really activate this, uh, I guess, uh, dormant agricultural co uh, community that's here in Wheat Ridge. We'd like to get that more active and make that a part of the community building. So with that, thank you. And again, council members, I'd really welcome your attendance. It'd be great to have you there if you can come, uh, even just to learn about the things that are happening. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Do we have anybody else for public comment before we move on? Seeing none, we'll move on to approval of the agenda. Are there any changes to the agenda this evening? I believe not. So we'll move on to public hearings and ordinances on second reading. Item one is Council Bill 04 2012. I'm going to open the public hearing. Council Member Pond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council Bill number 04 2012, an ordinance amending section 11 53B of the Wheat Ridge Code of Laws concerning application of the state liquor laws within the city. At issue, the Colorado Liquor Code, CRS subsection 1247 uh, 101 at SIC pre prevents local governments from issuing liquor license to establishments that are located within 500 feet of any public or private school, university, college campus, or seminary unless a local government by ordinance eliminates or reduces that, re that distance requirement. In October 2010, the City Council approved an ordinance lifting the distance limitation only for hotel and restaurant licenses. Recently, the city clerk's office has received inquiries for liquor license that are not of the hotel and restaurant type for proposed businesses that are within 500 feet of schools. If the default 500-foot limitation remains in effect, the city would be unable to issue liquor licenses to these businesses. Thank you. Would the city clerk please assign an ordinance number? This will be ordinance number 1510-1510. Uh, thank you. Do you have a staff presentation beyond the executive summary? Thank you. On the staff report, just a couple of things. <clears throat> as was mentioned in the in the uh, issue, you have authority as as the local governing body to um, to waive the 500 foot distance limitation from schools. You have a separate liquor authority that, of course, that issues those licenses, but they're bound by the rules that the council sets. And recently, you you went ahead and waived that rule for hotel and restaurant licenses, the kind of classic restaurant that also has liquor. Uh, since then, there have been, as was mentioned, uh, it, there's been interest in, I think probably one person testify, interest in having other kinds of licenses uh, within that limit. And so you have to waive that requirement by class of license. And if I draw your attention to the first page of the ordinance, uh, the very bottom of that page, shows you the uh, the change that's being made and the, the language that is in all caps are the new kinds of classes of license that this 500 foot rule would be waived for beer and wine brew pub arts licenses vintners restaurant licenses you'll notice it doesn't include tavern licenses which would be the kind of classic it's just a bar kind of place so you have you know licenses that that i think you have a social policy basis for saying these kinds of licenses we don't mind being within 500 feet of a school later on in the written in the staff report you'll notice we've listed some of the uh, some of the schools and their their locations uh, uh, you'll notice also the effective date of this ordinance is 
upon adoption. Uh, so the ordinance would be effective uh, tonight if approved. And I got one question before the meeting about, well, how soon could a license issue? And the answer is, this allows the license to be processed by the city, but it still has to be applied for and processed, and there is a time frame for that that you know, gets sent to the state, and, you know, there's, there's, there's a procedure. Uh, so it's not like, okay, you do this tonight and tomorrow, the city could issue and someone could have an event uh, within 500 feet of a school using an arts license, for example. You know, this doesn't change the, the time frames that you really don't have any control over at all of the the process and timing it takes to, to get a license uh, application for a new license scheduled and approved. It's going to have to go to the, the uh, liquor authority for a hearing, also goes to the state. And so there's usually a couple of months at least involved in that. I wanted to make that point. Other than that, happy to answer questions, or if there's more after the public testimony, I can do that. Thank you. Do we have anybody here from the public to speak on item number one? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to council discussion or questions on item number one. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and a motion's in order. Thank you. I move to approve Council Bill Number 4, 2012, an ordinance amending Section 11-53B of the Wheat Ridge Court of Laws concerning application of the state liquor laws on second reading and that it take effect immediately. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion to approve item number one. It was seconded by Council Member Stites. Discussion on the main motion? Please pull the council. Sorry. Motion carries 8-0. Thank you. Item two is Council Bill 06-2012. I'm going to open the public hearing and Council Member Stites. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to introduce Council Bill number 06-2012. An ordinance amending the Wheat Ridge Code of Laws, Chapter 2, Section 253, regarding membership of boards and commissions, and Sections 253F, concerning the administrating of oaths to the board and commission members. Would the city clerk please assign an ordinance number? This will be Ordinance Number 1511. Uh, thank you. Move on to the staff report. Uh, as council is aware, all boards and commissions in the city uh, have to have eight members. And in some cases, that's difficult and doesn't really serve the city that well. I think the pattern has been originally uh, the concept was eight members because that's the membership of the council. That way you can have two members from every district and get equal representation from districts. And that works fine for the council and for board of adjustment or planning commission, but it doesn't translate as well to boards like the, the building code advisory board, for example. It's just not... Not, not as relevant. You're more interested in getting the appropriate expertise on those boards so that they can, they're more specialized in their duties. What this ordinance uh, does is allows the um, uh, council to provide for a board of commission with less than eight members. Uh, as well, we found while we were doing that, we found um, a provision that requires board and commission members newly appointed to come to a council meeting to get sworn in. And honestly, we've not follow that practice consistently, uh, and it's a waste of their time often to come to a meeting uh, just for that purpose. And so what this ordinance does is allows the council to provide for a different number of board and commission members. When council does that, it adjusts the quorum requirement because the quorum will have to go down. You can't have a five-member quorum for a five-member board of commission. That means everybody's got to show up every single meeting. It doesn't happen. And secondly, it allows oaths to be administered by the mayor or designee in, in the city clerk's office as an alternative. If, if for a particular reason it's important, it would be a good idea, I want to welcome people, have them come and be sworn in at a council meeting that doesn't preclude that. So those are the changes made by this ordinance. Thank you. Do we have anybody here from the public to speak on item number two tonight? Uh, seeing that, we'll move on to council discussion. Any questions or comments? Mr. Starker? Mr. Dahl, is the quorum reached by 50% plus one, or is there another, another yes. formula? 50% plus one. Okay. I think the language would be a majority. So it's a majority of whatever number of total number of members are on, the, on that particular board. So if it's a seven-member board, it would be four. 
Any other and, questions? And that's the rule we apply for counsel, too, when you think about it. It's a quorum uh, is a majority, you know, is, is the uh, is a majority of council members, so five equals a quorum for the council because you're an eight member board. Do we say that in the ordinance? Uh, I yes, I we, we do. Let's see. Uh, yes, bottom of the first page, majority of members of the board or commission shall constitute a quorum for the transaction of business. Any other questions, comments? I'm going to close the public hearing and a motion's in order. I move to approve Council Bill Number 06-2012, an ordinance amending the Wheat Ridge Code of Laws regarding membership of boards and commissions and the administering of oaths to those members on second reading and that it will take effect 15 days after final publication. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion for approval, a second by Council Member DeMott. Please follow the Council. Motion carries 8-0. Uh, thank you. The next item on the agenda is ordinances on first reading. The purpose of first reading is to set the date and time of the public hearing called the second reading. Amendments by council are allowed on first reading. Public comment is not allowed until second reading. Item three is Council Bill 07-2012. Council Member Langworthy. Thank you, Mayor. Council Bill number 07-2012, an ordinance approving the rezoning of property located at 5060 Ward Road from planned industrial development and light industrial to mixed-use commercial transit-oriented development, zone district case number WZ-12-02 IBC Holdings. In September of 2010, City Council adopted new mixed-use zone districts, which are intended to create a streamlined development review process, allowing higher densities, mixed use development with a range of land uses, including residential. The applicant requests approval of a zone change from planned industrial development and light industrial to mixed use commercial TOD for property located at 5060 Ward Road. The zone change is a first step of the process for approval for redevelopment of this site with mixed use zoning. Pursuant to the mixed use zone district, Sites over 10 acres in size must complete a concept plan. The concept plan, which is approved administratively, is a general plan for development that designates proposed circulation concepts, proposed building pads, and preliminary, preliminary land use concepts. A neighborhood meeting would be required prior to application for the concept plan approval process. If approved and prior to construction of any new structures, a site development plan will be required meeting the standards in the mixed use zone. So. A motion in order? Motion's in order. I move to approve Council Bill number 07-2012, an ordinance approving the re rezoning of property located at 5060 Ward Road from planned industrial development and light industrial to mixed use commercial transit oriented development. The zone district on first reading, order it published, public hearing set for Monday, July 9th, 2012 at 7 p.m in City Council Chambers and that it take effect 15 days after final publication. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion to approve item number three, seconded by Councilor DeMott. Please follow the Council. Motion carries 8-0. Thank you. Item four is Council Bill 08-2012, Council Member Davis. Council Bill Number 08-2012, an ordinance approving the rezoning of property located at 4695 Wadsworth Boulevard from residential to to mixed-use neighborhood zone district. Case number WZ-12-033, Patrick Nichols and Associates. I'll give a little background on this. The property is located at the southwest corner of West 47th Avenue and Wadsworth Boulevard and is zoned residential two, which allows primarily one and two family dwellings based on the lot size and width. So the subject parcel is 12,482 square feet, 0.29 acres. The property has on it a two-story residence originally built in 1947. Access to the lot previously came from Wadsworth, but this access in, is inaccessible by a split rail fence installed in 2005. An unimproved driveway serves the property from West 47th Avenue. The remainder of the lot consists of a turf with a few mature trees on the western and southern sides of the lot. The existing home is in state of disrepair and has a history of noncompliance in relation to 
building codes, nuisance codes, and permit requirements. The applicants currently own and operate the business Mod Mood and Retro Consignment located on 7700 West 44th Avenue in Wheat Ridge. They specialize in mid-century modern design, furnishings, and decor. Among the services they offer is a design center for commercial and residential customers. The applicants are seeking to expand their design center and showroom components of the business into the subject, structure, and property. The architecture of the existing home is mid-century modern, which complements the mod mood aesthetic. The applicants intend to preserve the home's historic and architectural value. I think that's enough background on that. Is there a motion in order? Motion's in order. <laughs> that's the Reader's Digest version. <laughs> I move to approve Council Bill Number 08-2012, an ordinance approving the rezoning of the property located at 4695 Wadsworth Boulevard from residential to to mixed-use neighborhood, zone district on first reading, order it published, public hearing set for Monday, July 9th, 2012 at 7 p.m. in the City Council Chambers, and that it take effect 15 days after final publication. Second. We have a motion to approve item number four was seconded by Council Member Starker. Please call the Council. Motion carries 8-0. Thank you. Item 5 is Council Bill 09-2012. Mr. Starker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item number 5 is Council Bill number 09-2012, an ordinance amending various sections of Chapter 26 of Wheat Ridge Code of Laws concerning zoning to regulate group homes for the handicapped and to bring uniformity to certain residential group homes zoning requirements, and substance abuse clinic zoning requirements <clears throat> at issue in this matter. The city's current zoning regulations as set forth in Chapter 26 of the Wheat Ridge Code of Laws treat group homes of any number of unrelated handicapped individuals living together as a family. Group homes of any size for such individuals may therefore locate in the same zone districts in which a single family dwelling is a permitted use without a formal review or application process. City staff believes the location of larger group homes of any type in residential districts without a review process could result in land use impacts that are incompatible with surrounding properties. The city attorney's office has advised it is permissible but not required under state and federal law to regulate the zoning of group homes for the handicapped including imposing a numeric limitation on the size of such homes. Staff therefore recommended the preparation of this ordinance to create zoning regulations for residential group homes for the handicapped and to make all residential group home zoning regulations generally consistent. Is a motion in order? Motion's in order. I move to approve Council Bill number 09-2012 and ordinance amending various sections of Chapter 26 of the Wheat Ridge Code of Laws concerning zoning to regulate group homes for the handicapped and to bring uniformity to certain residential group home zoning requirements and substance abuse clinic zoning requirements. On first reading, order it published, public hearing set for Monday, June 25, 2012 at 7 p.m. in the City Hall Council Chambers and that it takes effect 15 days after final publication. Is there a second? A second. We have a motion to approve item number five. It was seconded by Council Member Stites. For the record, Mr. Uh, Johnston, would you please repeat the answer to the question that Mr. Starker asked earlier about residential group homes and commercial areas? Please. Uh, in, in commercial areas, uh, group, the, the question uh, that Mr. Starker asked pertain to not residential group homes but um, clinics for substance abuse which uh, are generally with uh, with a residential component or without a residential component are permitted uh, in commercial zoning districts uh, the, the code is being amended just to uh, streamline how that reads in the code for for ease of use uh, but the content in terms of where that's allowed is not changing thank you we have a motion for approval. Please poll the council. Motion. 
Motion carries 8-0. Uh, thank you. The next item on the agenda is decisions, resolutions, and motions. Item 6, Council Member Pond. <clears throat> thank you. Motion to appoint Christina Ria to the Animal Welfare and Control Commission for District 3. There is currently a vacancy on the Animal Welfare and Control Commission in District 3. Christina Ria is a resident of District 3 and has submitted an application requesting appointment to the Animal Welfare and Control Commission. Council members Stites and Pond have requested that Christina Ria be appointed to fill the vacancy term ending in uh, March 2nd, 2014. Is there a motion order? Motion's in order. I move to appoint Christina Ria to the Animal Welfare and Control Commission representing District 3, term to expire March 2nd, 2014. Second. We have a motion to approve Christina Ray, and it was seconded by Council Member Stites. Please poll the Council. Motion carries 8-0. Now, to take advantage of our new ordinance, I'm going to ask the City Clerk to please swear in Christina. She's here tonight, right? Come on up and get sworn in on TV, national TV. National. Oh, Channel 8, really. <laughs> national. <laughs> the clerk will ask, act as my designee tonight. <laughs> that'll, that'll be your copy. So if you could raise your right hand and read right here. Yeah. I, Christina Ray, do solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will support the Constitution and the laws of the United States, the State of Colorado, and the Charter and Ordinances of the City, and will faithfully perform the duties of the Animal Welfare and Control Commission, which I am about to assume. Okay, good. Thank you. You need to... Thank you. I'd just like to say, Christina, thank you for volunteering. appreciate that. You need to... You can leave it... Yeah, after you sign it, please leave the deposit there for us. Okay. <laughs> um, sign this one. Oh, okay. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Here's your... <laughs> so item seven is resolution number 28-2012. Mr. Reinhardt. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'd like to introduce resolution number 28-2012, a resolution amending the fiscal year 2012 general fund budget to reflect the approval of a supplemental budget appropriation for the 38th Avenue pedestrian bicycle count grant in the amount of $2,000. The Community Development Department received a, received a grant from the Jefferson County Public Health to assist the collection of data on 38th Avenue. Specifically, the grant money will help fund the pedestrian bicycle counts on the quarter this fall. The grant award was not budgeted in 2012. Uh, and I, I think that's pretty much it. We just need to add it to the budget. Is a motion in order? Motion's in order. I move to approve resolution number 28, 2012, a resolution amending the fiscal year 2012 budget to reflect the approval of a supplemental budget appropriation for the 30, 38th Avenue pedestrian bicycle count grant in the amount of $2,000. So second. second? Second. We have a motion to approve item number seven. It was seconded by Council Member Starker. Discussion on item seven? Please poll the council. Motion carries 8-0. Thank you. Item 8 is resolution number 29-2012. Council Member Jay. Resolution number 29-2012, a resolution authorizing approval of the Denver Regional Council of Governments Consortium Agreement concerning the goals and governance of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Sustainability Communities Regional Planning Grant. The issue is in November 2011, the Sustainable Communities Partnership, a federal collaboration of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, Department of Transportation, and the Environmental Protection Agency, awarded the Denver region a 4.5 million regional planning grant. 
With this grant funding, a consortium, consortium of municipalities, including Wheat Ridge, counties, state agencies, housing authorities, nonprofits, corporate interests, philanthropic and academic organizations will work together to further enhance and implement Metro Vision, which is a, a plan for the Denver, of the Denver Regional Council of Governments long range planning document while addressing one of our region's most pressing and exciting challenges, levering the planned 6.7 billion expansion of the fast tracks transit system. Specifically, this grant will support multi-jurisdictional planning efforts that integrate housing, land use, economic and workforce development, transportation and infrastructure investments. I want to make one little comment from the background uh, regarding this uh, consortium agreement, um, it, which for the thousands of people who are listening at home and want to know more about this, um, the consortium's overreaching goal, the, all of these groups, of, these groups that have come together, is to provide a planning process that aligns investments, programs, and policies to maximize the benefits that result from the region's investment in transit. We anticipate a region with greater access to job opportunities across the entire income spectrum, lower combined transportation and housing costs, reduced consumption of fossil fuels, reduced strain on our air and water resources, and ultimately the development of concentrated mixed-use pedestrian and bicycle-friendly urban centers along transit lines that allow our residents our residents included, to easily access their daily needs without having to get into their car. Is the motion in order? The motion's in order. All right. I move to approve resolution number 29-2012, a resolution authorizing approval of the Denver Regional Council of Governments consorting agreement concerning the goals and governance of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Sustainable Communities Regional Planning Grant. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion for approval of item number eight. It was seconded by Mr. Pond. Any discussion on item eight? Please follow the council. Motion carries eight zero. Thank you. Item nine is resolution number 30-2012. Council Member Davis. Resolution number 30-2012, a resolution amending the fiscal year 2012 general fund budget to reflect the approval of a supplemental budget appropriation in the amount of $350,000 to renewal Wheat Ridge for the purpose of providing a loan for the Town Center North Project infrastructure improvements. The issue at hand is a request by the Wheat Ridge Urban Renewal Authority doing business as Renewal Wheat Ridge <coughs> for a no interest loan in the amount of $350,000 to complete infrastructure improvements at Town Center North as required by a subdivision improvement agreement between the City of Wheat Ridge and Renewal Wheat Ridge. Motion in order? Motion's in order. I move to approve resolution number 30-2012, a resolution amending the fiscal year 2012 general fund budget to reflect the approval of a supplemental budget appropriation in the amount of $350,000 to renewal Wheat Ridge for the purpose of providing a loan for the Town Center North Project infrastructure improvements. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion to approve item number nine. It was seconded by Mr. Stites. Discussion on item nine? Please pull the council. Motion carries 8-0. Thank you. That concludes our agenda for this evening. We'll move on to city manager's matters. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have a couple items. Hopefully I'm not still in any thunder for from city council, but <laughs> I'd like to uh, give a couple updates on uh, some of the summer food, food programs for our youth. Anybody going to talk about that? If I not, I will do that. Um, we're lucky to have it, um, two, at least two locations that I'm aware of um, in Wheat Ridge that are going to offer uh, food to our youth um, throughout the summer. And the first one is at Martinson Elementary School at 6625 West 45th Place. Um, that has already started 
um, as of June 4th. It will be on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Um, lunch will be served at, uh, snack will be served at 1045, and then there will be activity time for the kids, and then lunch will be served at 1145. And this is sponsored by the Holy Cross Lutheran Church. Um, the second um, uh, location is at Pennington Elementary, and that also started on June 4th. And food will be served Monday through Friday, and lunch will be served at 11.30. And this is sponsored by the Jefferson County Public Schools. So we're fortunate to have two locations for our kids um, to receive some healthy food in the summer. And also, um, talking about food, uh, the Wheat Ridge Farmer's Market starts this Saturday, or this Thursday, June 14th. And um, it's from 10 to 3 p.m. every Thursday throughout the summer. It's on Wadsworth um, in front of the Big Lots and Ross department stores. Thank you. Thank you. City Attorney's matters? Uh, just one. I'd like to report on the um, uh, amplified sound ordinance that uh, at study session you directed we, we, we create. I want to let you know that I've, I've drafted that. It took me about an hour to draft it. So <laughs> budget-wise, it's, it's yeah. not, a, not a lot of material. So it's, I'm not at all worried about staying within the budget. And I appreciate the council uh, putting that limit on. I can, I can handle that. It's no, no trouble. Um, I've created two things, a draft ordinance and a permit application and, and action form um, for, for this program. Um, and let me sort of touch upon a few things that are in it and then ask for your guidance on when you want to see this, be it at a study session or we could easily put it together if you like for uh, your next meeting two weeks hence. Um, it requires them to make an application. It would be available to really anyone, business, private, nonprofit, individual, uh, resident. Um, there's room in this present proposal anyhow, which, by the way, I have out for comment to the mayor, to Mr. Goff, to Mr. Brennan, Mr. Johnstone, for any comments they might have, and we'll I'll incorporate those into the draft I've, I've finished. It does provide for a requirement that the neighborhood be flyered or that there be flyers to the surrounding neighborhood advising that the event's going to take place. And the way I've presently structured it is those flyers would go out after the event was approved. No point putting out flyers if it turns out that that application is not going to be approved for some uh, reason. There is a sound limitation and a distance where you measure it from. I haven't put in the number because I'm no expert and I'm hoping that uh, and get some help figuring out what that number is. Uh, the application is to be re reviewed by the community development director and police chief. Those recommendations go to the mayor. The mayor makes the decision to grant, deny, or grant with conditions. There will always be some conditions, compliance with the city's uh, requirements, compliance with the, the, the posting and noticing the flyer requirement, if that's what you end up imposing, and any other kind of site-specific requirements for a special events permit like this, there's usually some unique condition that you can't really contemplate in the ordinance, but uh, on the ground with a specific application, you know, ah, uh, in this particular case, it's got to end by 8 o'clock because of something, or there can't be lights, or you, you don't know that until you see it, so I've left room in the system for those conditions to be applied on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis. And so that's kind of the structure now. Uh, and the, I'd be happy to answer any questions. And as well, we need direction on when you would like to see it. Do you want to see it at a study session upcoming, or would you like to see it first reading uh, a couple weeks from now? Mr. Reinhardt? Uh, I guess my question is, um, are the types and conditions uh, sufficiently normal and regular that, that we'll be able to work our way through them on the dais, or do you think there are a number of sort of discussion points on, on the limits on terms and conditions and volume. Is it a relatively simple or relatively complicated discussion in your estimation? It's primarily numeric, you know. Um, how many times a year can any one location? What should be the decimal limit? And you're going to want some staff recommendations on that. And probably what about the flyers? Do they go out, you know, to how far out do they go? Those were the things that I'm glad you asked the question because those are the things where I put blanks in my draft knowing that I was just going to need guidance. For the rest, uh, I was able to write without that much trouble. I also got today a copy of the um, 
City of Fort Collins special events permit system, which is used for a broader range of things. But I may find a few things in there that I'll that I'll, I don't want to make it any more complicated than it is right now. It's just a couple of pages. Well, I, I would be normally inclined to want to discuss it as a study session, but I'll, I'm not em incredibly emotional about it. If people think there's more urgency than that, I'm willing to listen to that. Mr. Dumont, do you have a comment? Um, I would say initially, I don't feel like I. I think we can handle it at a meeting, but I just wanted to ask a question first. Was there any uh, neighboring cities that we used to that you looked at to write it up, or was there anything we can look at to compare it other than Fort Collins? I could certainly ask for. I, I put out an attorney's listserv, you know, inquiry, and Fort Collins was who responded. Oh, okay. I'm happy to look at Sarabat and Lakewood. <laughs> What they've got in their codes, and I'm, that's easy to do, and I can easily. I mean, do that did you, you when you wrote it up, was no, there any particular no. use? No. When I wrote it up, I, I got a tablet of paper and a pen and did it the old-fashioned way. I just sat down, believe it or not, and actually wrote it. Yeah. Uh, I feel like our, no. I think our instruction was pretty clear, and I don't think there's only, like you said, the three things. So, all right, thanks. So, does anybody else have a problem with this coming forth on first reading in two weeks? No, I think we. Ms. Dre? I, I think we need to move on this fairly quickly, so very much so. With that in mind, if we're going to do that, um, can you give me direction now? I assume you'd want it uh, to be effective immediately on adoption second reading. Might as well save that time if you want to, just like the liquor ordinance. And it's still a two-reading ordinance, not an emergency, but right. you'll save a couple weeks that way. Anybody okay. have a problem with it being approved immediately upon adoption? Thanks. Mr. Oma Chief. There are some equipment uh, uh, issues that I think council needs to be aware of and training issues. Uh, if you go with a decibel uh, standard, uh, and I just got this today, so I've not had a chance to, uh, to look at the training that's required, but the training is pretty extensive when it comes to noise ordinance enforcement. And the noise meters, if you get the uh, class A meters, will run about uh, 550 to $600 a piece. So I, I need some time to figure out what that looks like, because if you adopt an ordinance and put it into effect, I don't know that I can have my people trained. Do you uh, have any idea how many you would need, how many machines? The, the recommendations are, are to have two per shift. So, so I'm looking at four, probably four to six, and then the the training in regards to uh, to this. Uh, so, and, and I need that many so they're available, uh, you know, for for different events, and, uh, and and my officers have those. I don't have a clue yet on what the training requirements are and uh, where those training classes are. So, so I'd asked uh, I'd ask for council's consideration to to give me some time this week to find out what those are and what that looks like. Okay. Should we move this and, I mean, <clears throat> instead of bringing it forth at the next meeting, maybe do the study session so that way Chief Brandon can do some research and then kind of let us know what the costs are and, I, I, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with having a regular meeting. I just think that we need to be, give some consideration. Well, I think, uh, Mr. DeMont, you know, question, comment? I was going to say also with the, uh, um, if we do move it forward directly to a meeting, we would have, there would be some administrative time between the, any application and approval anyway, and we could definitely put a little bit of a, <clears throat> a little extra time in there to begin with for the police to get through with their training and, and things like that. Even if we did put this through on our next meeting, we could still a lot. set a few extra days on the administrative part to get through the this language that I think um, the chief's right he just saw it today because he was out of town but I think once Mr. Dahl meets with him we'll have a better idea of what he really needs because other than a amplified sound for an event the, the noise ordinance doesn't change it's only for amplified events that's right the way I've set up the ordinance is uh, uh, just for that event it, it uh, supersedes the noise ordinance re requirements otherwise and otherwise you'd have a conflict and it's quite likely that these events would probably violate our present noise ordinance. And so you want to know which one controls, and it would be the decibel numbers in the event permit. You, you, otherwise, it's pointless to you know do it, or you'd, you'd have noise complaints that would have to be enforced under the old 
under the existing code. So the question is, does anybody still have a problem with it coming forth in two weeks and then we can make adjustments as needed? Okay. Okay. Thanks. Anything else, Mr. Dell? No, thank you. Thank you. City Clerk's matters? Nothing tonight. Thank you. Mr. Starker? Nothing tonight, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Davis? Nothing tonight. Thank you. Mr. Pond? <clears throat> I just want to um, encourage anyone who can go to the event on Wednesday night, the planning event for the live local harvest that was uh, brought up at the beginning of our meeting, um, you know, as a, as a way to start discussion and continue the discussion that started last year for urban agriculture in our city. I really think it's a great thing uh, for us to support. Um, so if anyone has a chance to get out there, um, I would encourage that. Thank you. Mr. DeMott? I'm nothing tonight, thanks. Thank you. Mr. Reinhardt? Were you going to address the, the RTD letter, or do you want me to, I was just going to say a word on it if you weren't going to. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I just wanted to follow up on the on discussion, going discussions on the bus services, uh, canceling the bus thirty service on, uh, well, in particular, the 32 route, which goes by the school and serves certain computer routes and several other routes within the city and out through uh, uh, the west to the west through unincorporated Jeffco and on to Golden. Um, we did receive a letter back addressed to the mayor um, from RTD to uh, which basically says they're going to try and maintain uh, uh, some com commuter times and service to the school at least a couple of days. The staff work at RTD is ongoing and will be presented in new form at the end of the month. Um, I think that's a good thing. We've consulted with uh, MNCPN to see if they would be uh, had a desire to press for additional service to their facility. Uh, we've heard from Golden and the commissioners, all of whom have an interest to some extent in seeing these bus routes um, moving forward. And I think, uh, you know, the devil's still in the detail. I think we have to see what they come back with and see if, in fact, it, it, we think it serves our, our citizens' needs. But it's a, a good first step that RTD did respond to us on uh, that, and they will at least looking very hard at continuing to serve at least the high school, which I think is critical. A um, couple other little notes. I attended, as did the uh, city manager, Mr. Goff, attended a fundraiser for the uh, um, Boys and Girls Clubs of Jefferson County. Um, it was a, a very successful and fun event on Saturday night. Uh, I don't actually know what the tally is. They're raising money for uh, all of the... Uh, uh, potential for uh, boys and girls clubs in Jefferson County. There uh, seems to be a need that is supported by, it's brought forward to us by uh, Chief of Police Brennan to uh, to get these sort of facilities going. The first one in the county uh, was done uh, with the leadership of uh, Mayor Murphy and uh, District Attorney Scott Story uh, opened last year and we hope to follow their model. As many of you have heard, we are looking at potentially using the Martin Insight jointly for our recreational uh, for a rec program and for uh, the Boys and Girls Club. So we're hopeful that uh, uh, we can follow the model, as was explained to me, of in Denver where they collect and fundraise cumulatively to support all the facilities. So I'm, I'm hoping that program uh, continues to, to move forward. Um, and then one last sort of fun thing. We, we, uh, the, the, we refielded two teams this year in the... Uh, um, in the Colfax Marathon, and, and uh, unfortunately, we didn't win the mayor's an award this year for sponsoring us in that. Um, but we did we did set a new record for Wheat Ridge team number one um, at uh, 344.29. Of uh, the team consisted of Lauren McCulloch, Sarah DeTulian, the mayor's daughter, uh, myself, the city attorney, and, and Nathan Mosley. And I'd like to congratulate the police team, which was almost as fast at 354. Um, and and uh, we wish them luck next year to, to see how they have. There's been an appeal filed and uh, <laughs> re-verifying. I think they got the teams mixed up, but uh, we look forward to the competition. Thank you. Uh, I think that's all I had. Thanks. Mr. Reinhard, do you know if uh, we'll be awarded any funds this year based on that ranking? Have no, the, apparently the competition in the team government co-ed division was somewhat better this year. and. Uh, we were only 13th as opposed to last year, so we we need to we need to step it up for you. But out of, but out of 15, right? Yeah, the, I mean the side the pool is uh, the pool was much bigger. There were actually in our bracket 
Um, was there 43 teams? 43 teams this year. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a fun event. It really is. So. 25%. Yeah, so. Ms. Jay? Um, only a follow-up to the uh, speaker we had earlier uh, regarding the, the garden tour this Saturday, uh, regarding um, live local events. I think there's a cruiser crawl, which is means you get your fat, fat tire bike out as as well as your skinny tire bike out and, and do this. The live local events are really fun, and we get a, a lot of people. I've gone to several of them. There may be 70, 80 people there. And I, and I think it feels like a really good community thing. So I, I'm really suggesting that um, people consider that, doing something in your own community. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Lang, really? Thank you, Mayor. So there's actually one other place that is doing the summer feeding program. It's Healing Waters at 6475 West 29th Avenue. And they start at 730 with a breakfast. And then they have activities throughout the morning. And then they serve lunch. And then after that, the, the kids can go home. So it's, it's, it's a half-day kind of event for them. They started June 4th as well, and they run through August 4th. And then I just, we won't have another meeting before then, so I'm kind of give a little heads up now. Um, on June 23rd from 9 to 11 a.m., our new skate park at Discovery will be having their grand opening. They're already out there kind of test. I think the people that are building are doing a little testing, so it looks looks very exciting already and that's it uh thank you mr stites oh yeah uh as i drive around the city especially the last six months I, i'm seeing a lot of uh building additions uh people re-landscaping and i think we would like to thank you for taking pride and in investing in your community now on the flip side as i drive around town i'm starting to see a ton of weeds and if you're a business commercial please Watch those weeds coming up in your parking lot. It doesn't take long to whack them. Uh, there's a lot of right-of-ways and stuff that the weeds are popping up. You know, it's one way you can lose track of a community real fast. So please, please uh, take care of those weeds. It would be a great time to relocate your home or business to Wheat Ridge. If you need any help, see one of us or staff. Uh, positive thing this week, there's a lot of crime going on against elderly and senior citizens. Please take the time to watch. If you have elderly or senior citizens in your neighborhood, please watch them. Uh, there's some crime going on where they get lured out of their houses, uh, get beat up, uh, you know, uh, get broken into. So please take the time to, if you have elderly or, or for that matter, anybody in your neighborhood, watch out for them. Uh, you need to take uh, care that something doesn't happen to them. And as always, please try to find it and buy it in Wheat Ridge. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I wanted to also thank uh, Hunger Free Colorado, the Denver Nuggets, and uh, Healing Waters Church on 29th Avenue over in District 1. We had their grand opening today, their kickoff of the summer food program. Probably about 75 kids there, and they had a, a, events at uh, Stites Park. It was a great event for the city of Wheat Ridge. And uh, what I mentioned was it's ironic that the uh, mascot for Wheat Ridge is farmers, and here we're feeding a lot of people in the city of Wheat Ridge as farmers. And the kids understood that, that at one time Wheat Ridge was a farming community. So it was a great event today. And uh, the different Nuggets did a great job with the training and the kids and all kinds of events. And then I also wanted to mention on June 23rd, at, I believe it's 10 a.m., we're having the, the grand opening of the skate park. Or, or 9, 920 at uh, 38th and Kipling. So be there for the skateboard park. That's going to be great. And also, uh, I wanted to remind people, especially on the east side of town, that there is a new dog park. I'll see a lot of folks walking their dogs, and they'll, I'll tell them about the new dog park, and they don't know about it yet. So I wanted to remind the folks that if you live on uh, east side of town, there's also a, a new dog park at 47th and Miller at Fruitdale Park. And um, I also wanted to ask our residents to check out the main street of the downtown on 38th Avenue. We have a lot of new businesses. We'll have a lot of current businesses. You can walk, bike, or drive down 38th Avenue and visit some of the new restaurants and visit all the good businesses on 38th Avenue. And not only on 38th Avenue do we have some new and current businesses that have been around a while, but also 44th Avenue in the Independence area and then west of 44th on, on Wadsworth. And so we've got a lot of new activities and a lot of new events coming up. Then also the tickets for the Zappa Italian Circus, the family circus, they're actually on sale now. The tickets are on sale at the City Hall and also at the Wee Ridge Recreation Center. So we've got a lot of good things going on in the city of Wee Ridge, and um, be safe this summer. School's out. We're adjourned. <laughs>